I'm Sipora and I'm going to give you my bird's eye view on the Boys in the Band the Gay Movie, which was released in September this year, 2020. And it was directed by Joe Mantello and produced by Ryan Murphy, David Stone, Ned Martell and Alexis Martin Woodall. The Boys in the Band was initially a play, a theater play, and the play premiered off-Broadway on April 15, 1968. In 1970, it was adapted into a future film, and it was revived on Broadway for its 50th anniversary in 2018 and premiered on April 30, 2018. The Boys in the Band theater play was the first in its portrayal of regular gay men, Instead of the usual stereotypical gay depiction, it, de it presented men with vastly different personalities and looks. This in a time when gay wasn't accepted and was belittled and pushed in the freak corner. Now many people could identify with one or more of the depicted characters, even though the characters were gay. Gay men in the theater play presented like normal, regular human beings with emotions passions, strength and weaknesses like, like everybody else, like human beings. Mark Crowley, an American playwright, is the mind behind the boys in the band. He wrote the original 1968 play and he also wrote the screenplay together with Ned Martell. Fast forward to 2020. The movie has the perfect commencement with the song Hold On I'm Coming by Erna Franklin. It immediately gets you in the mood of the time frame of the late 60s. This song, by the way, is from Erna Franklin's album of 1969 called Soul Sisters. And of course, Erna Franklin was the elder sister of legendary Aretha Franklin. So, um,. The way they used the song, the title song, Hold On, I'm Coming, the very first song in the movie, is very indicative of the group of gay men, the group of friends, um, you know, preparing, um, closing off their, their day, the daily affairs, and eventually arriving at Michael's house, where they celebrate Harold's birthday. So, um, it's, it's a good start of the movie, and I also noticed that other music used in the movie very, very well supported the storytelling. So they really thought about us. Uh, usually they do, but sometimes you hear music and it's kind of off with the scene. But, but in this way, in this movie, all the music is really spot on. So uh, I really, really like that. I never saw the theater play, but I understood they kept the story pretty much the same as the original 1968 play. The boys in the band reminded me of the Swedish movie As It Is In Heaven, uh, Saw So Me Himmelen of 2004, where all these characters go through these emotional reflections and are forced to get real with each other uh, and themselves um, just to go to a deeper connection of friendship uh, and, 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 and presence than they've ever achieved before. So this movie had a lot about that. It, it had that same flavor. Um, and the movie aroused curiosity, especially concerning Anne McCarty, played by Brian Hutchison. I'm going to show you a photo of him in character and YouTube. The usage of this photo is part of the fair use policy, I promise, okay? So this is Brian Hutchison in character, playing Alan McCarthy in the movie. So who's Alan? Alan, Alan is this, this old friend old college friend of Michael, um, who's very troubled, who's got a lot of his mind, he's got challenges, and on this very day that Michael is uh, having all his friends over to celebrate the birthday of one of his friends, Alan calls him and eventually, uninvited, steps by, you know, he just, he, um, he just invites himself and he's forcibly part of the group of friends and then the story evolves and um, the feel you get with this Alan guy is 
is kind of a mysterious. He's the mysterious character among all these other personalities, among all these other uh, guys. And what's going on with Alan? Okay, um, the movie never explained that, including the original play. But it kind of implies and suggests that could Alan be this closeted gay man who basically refuses to come to turn with his own feelings, with his other feelings, his, his gay feelings, and he tries to suppress it. And uh, what we do know is he is having some marital problems um, that is being put, um, portrayed in the movie, so by that time is Alan going through all these emotions and maybe having to choose one feeling over the other? Um, these are all questions because really Alan, the Alan character is this mysterious character. So, but they've done that really, really well. And Brian Hutchison who played this Alan McCarthy guy plays it really, really well. Uh, he really plays out this inner struggle of, of frustration and, and, and like there's a dagger hanging above his head all the time kind of thing. <laughs> He's, he's this, this emotional explosion kind of thing ready to happen at any moment. <laughs> and so the question, because the movie and the original play never really explains it, the question with Alan is again, is he a closet gay man? Is Alan indicative or a topology for all these gay men back in the day who explicitly chose not to come out but stay in the closet? out of fear, out of angst, what would society think, what would the environment think, um, just play it safe, just play straight, just have normal regular straight relationships and we're good. Um, but eventually there is a rub and the rub gets more intense and this Alan McCarthy character is basically showing that rub. But because the movie and the original play never explains what the heck the bop is, <laughs> we don't know, <laughs> okay? But it is implied that maybe Alan is a closeted gay guy who just simply doesn't want to let it out. That's basically the deal. Um, but uh, yeah, very interesting, very cleverly done. So technically speaking, Alan is the only straight person among these gay men and <laughs> the dynamics of that is is <laughs> almost explosive but done really really beautifully in the movie jim parsons as michael absolutely has <laughs> the most lines in the movie but apparently it's necessary because uh, jim's character michael is really the climate setter and literally the game changer in the storyline and, and I believe Jim Parsons really embodied the character really, really well. I'm showing you a picture, um, a depiction of uh, one of the scenes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jim had lots of lines. Uh, it was also great to see Andrew Reynolds again. Oh my goodness, this time in his portrayal of Larry. Larry is this polygamous, free spirit, uh, liberal guy and... Um, Andrew just nailed it. It's really, really wonderful to see Andrew work again. He's a wonderful actor. Um, by the way, YouTube, the usage of these photos is part of the fair use policy, where it is written that allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, and research. Back to the movie. So the movie, The Boys in the Band 2020, is very visual. It, it has realness and at sometimes it was cutthroat um, but but not in a vicious manner um, it was artful fascinated it's impressive it has really engrossing personalities and that's interesting because apparently the script gave the characters room space to um, to deepen and to mature but in a relatively short time span. So that is really, really amazing. Um, this movie is like a little bit over an hour. And so, so uh, but these characters are really well 
digged out characters for the short time span you encounter them. It is well directed. It has melodrama in it. It's thought provoking for sure. I was earlier talking about the Adam character, but there are other thought provoking moments. All performances in the movie are excellent. Um, <laughs> and it's. I'm thinking about so many things at the same time. No, no. Just, just keep it in this way. All performances in the movie are absolutely excellent. And yes, I have my favorites, but I just try to keep this this um, this review short. And obviously, this movie, The Boys in the Band 2020, is an absolute gay crowd pleaser for sure. Okay, absolutely. This is a really beautiful, well directed movie. My only but important critique is the following: uh, Michael. This character, played by Jim Parsons, is the only religious character in the story, and he's Catholic. And uh, I understood that his his character is basically based on Mark Crowley himself. Um, and so this character is religious, meaning he believes in God. But this character uses extensive cuss words that includes God and other religious tainted cuss words. And that is so stupid, it's so weird, I don't understand why you put that character in there you know when someone truly believes in god then why is this character cursing with god the most of all these other characters you know the most g damn word and other religious connected curse words came from michael came from this character who is actually religious he actually believes in god that didn't make sense to me and that's not funny so um did Mart wanted to make fun of religious people or something, making them look like hypocrites or something? Well, we can't ask him anymore because he unfortunately passed away uh, in March 2020. But, you know, why would the religious person use extensive cuss words that includes God and other religious tainted cuss words? This really offended me in the movie because it doesn't make sense. Even though I'm not Catholic, uh, I'm actually Jewish, I'm a religious Jewish person. But there are many other LGBTQ people like me who do still believe in God. And this is really offensive. Because, you know, if you really believe in God, no matter what religion you're following or you're inspired by, you automatically don't use these type of cuss words. It goes automatically. Like, I never even heard a religious uh, Muslim say Jesus Christ for, for for example just like that or um, or uh, a Christian saying the G damn word or a religious Jew saying the G damn word you know for some reason automatically you just don't use those words that involve um, these religious words you know you don't use those kind of cuss words so to me this really didn't make any sense at all that Michael in the movie and apparently also in the original play is this religious character he really believes in God but he cusses like crap with God and with other religious words more than anybody in the entire uh, movie more than all the other personalities and that is really offensive and repugnant to me and I believe even to other LGBTQ plus people because again there are many people who do believe in God uh, from within our LGBTQ plus community and who would not say these words either and everybody who knows me knows I never use those words either so it doesn't make sense to look at the movie and then watch this character who is apparently religious but he's using all these religious words as cuss words. It's offensive and I really wonder what Mart tried to say with this because that character actually was based on him so anyway this is my only critique but a very important critique and um, it's offensive and repugnant because no religious person would use those words. The Boys in the Band 2020, very beautiful movie, um, very well thought of, except for this one criticism that I've vocalized. I give The Boys in the Band 2020 four stars.
Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and see you next time.